It's about that time. Visualizing, paddling out and making it real. Dedication on a level only you can feel. Motivation. It gets stronger every year. Realization. Action cures fear. The surf cast, yeah. Well, let's get straight into this. I'm just super curious about your surfing journey, your perspective, the surfboards you ride, the way that you ride them. I'm super inspired by what I've seen you doing. And I won't go back to the beginning. And uh, what I'm really curious about is when you started surfing, were you straight into the longboards or, or were you a shortboarder? And if so, take us through your kind of journey to how you ended up riding everything. Dude, well, yeah, thanks for yeah, being interested. <laughs> yeah, it's been fun and I'm super stoked to yeah, be able to be here today chatting with you. You're a legend, someone yeah, I look up to and I have always loved your surf movies and yeah, getting to hear about you from Tommy Witt has been really cool. Um So yeah, stoked. Thanks for having me on here. And yeah, so I grew up in San Clemente and yeah, same town that Tommy Witt's from. And I grew up shortboarding and yeah, it was super fun. Family was super into it. And I mean, still is. I've got Griffin and Crosby uh, are my cousins and they're on the tour. It's awesome. And was competing with them a lot growing up. And I was never quite on their level. The Griffin was always a bit better than me, but yeah, it was fun. We we got to kind of travel, do a lot of the local Grom contests. And and then when I was like 15, I started to get a little bit burned out and was uh just kind of tired of I guess the crowds, like, you know, if the waves were small, it, there was only a few waves in town that we're all kind of taken over by other people. I mean, yeah, you could get some waves, but it was like, you'd have to sit for a while. And I just remember my dad being super psyched to surf because he was a longboarder. And, um, so I was just, I think I was about 15 or 16 and I was just like, all right, dad, let's go. Like, I'll just go cruise with you down to Sano, um, which is our local like longboarding wave. And, and then, um, yeah, I just got super stoked on it and kind of felt like I rediscovered my love for surfing and just kind of brought me back to my roots of just having fun. And I mean, just catching a lot of waves is amazing, right? Like being able to just zip around and and just do the thing that you're out there for, which is just riding the waves. And so, yeah, I felt like that was, you know, one awesome benefit. And then also wanting to learn how to nose ride was really cool. I kind of got locked in, just wanted nose ride. Like that was all I was about for a couple of years. And I was just like super stoked. And then kind of now I'm kind of been a little bit of an in-between like to longboard something that's an either a nose rider or some gliders or mid lengths that kind of do a little bit of everything. And yeah, I gotta say, I, I give a lot of inspiration to Tommy Witt for sure. He's definitely inspired me just so much, just his style and his ability to do the, just surf outside the box, you know, (laughs) as you've seen and you documented in that really rad Costa Rica movie you guys made. Yeah, that was really cool. And um, all the other stuff you guys do down in the DR as well. So yeah, it's so sick. And um Yeah, super fun to have him as a buddy and yeah, get to meet people like you. So thanks. (laughs) Hell yeah, dude. And tell me about how being able to shape the boards for the kind of surfing you want to do is kind of that that link to the next level. Hey, thanks. Yeah, that's uh definitely the dream and the goal is just keep experimenting and yeah, I felt like my surfing kind of got to a point where I just wanted, yeah, something really, it's just some weird stuff outside the box. And yeah, there kind of comes a point where you just got to start doing it yourself. And so, yeah, that's been a a super fun journey, mostly just doing some mid lengths and a little bit of long boards as well. And yeah, just been wanting to try and make boards that blend that long board glide and trim and a little bit of that stability on the nose, something that gives you some lift, but 
something that you can still turn and control in the pocket. Um, yeah, it's, it can be a little tricky because sometimes, you know, you, you want one thing and it takes away from, it takes away from the other. And so trying to find the sweet spots on these mid lengths has been super fun. Um, one thing we've been doing, I've been really enjoying is the twin fins. And a lot of people think that, you know, you, the, you got and got to have a single fin and nose ride, but I feel like there's a lot of other things that are maybe more important than that. Like your rails and your rockers. Um, yeah, I'd say that's probably your, your biggest things. And just having enough fin, like whether it's a thruster or a twin or a single, like, yeah, that'll, that'll hold if the rest of the little details of the board have, have good hold. So a lot of my mid lengths, I, We'll kind of put a bit more of a nose rider rocker where it has extra tail rocker and a lower nose rocker, um, which really gives you that mini longboard feel. Um, you know, it, it just holds on the nose really well and generates speed while you're on the nose without, you know, spinning out and it gives you lift. And then also kind of having a, a little bit of a softer rail than maybe most like performance longboards have, like in the tail something that's between like a, a shortboard rail and a classic longboard rail. So yeah, that gives a lot of hold and still gives you a little bit of that snappy feeling. And so, yeah, just kind of blending all those little tricks and, um, making it so yeah, it's a board that you kind of want to get off the tail. Cause I know like a lot of the mid lengths are kind of big boy short boards. And if, if that's, what you're going for, like something a little gunnier, then that's pretty sick. But I like trying to get a little funky with it and getting up on the, uh, towards the nose or the middle and just trimming it and just wanting to make boards that kind of encourage that type of surfing. Cause I mean, yeah, if you think about like board being say seven in the seven foot range, it's like, there's plenty of room to do cross steps and uh, I mean, you see people doing little cross steps on like those kind of cruisy longboard skateboards, you know, or, or an Indo board. And those boards are all like two or three feet, but they've, they're doing it with style cruising and, um, and they just got little, little tiny cross steps and they've got it dialed. And so I was like, yeah, that's kind of the, kind of the idea is just kind of narrowing up your stance and just letting the board do the work. and. Um, yeah, feeling that, that cross step feel that you get when you kind of just take a little tiny step and all of a sudden you get locked in with a lot more speed and flow and glide. And so, yeah, that's kind of what has been getting me stoked. Dude, that's incredible. So do you find yourself really like zoning into, to particular surfing goals or do you find that when you get to one point, it's kind of leading you to a next one. And, and so it's just this constant evolution for you. Uh, um, that's, that's rad. I think, yeah, it's, it's maybe a little bit of both. Um, yeah. Wanting to find a board that, that works and that, you know, you can, I could really say like support and hype up um something that everyone could ride you know a lot of the experimental boards are tricky and maybe i might have fun on it for a little but you know there's a lot of the imperfect boards and i don't know if there's even like a really perfect board but there's boards that are really beginner friendly and easy to ride and and so for me as a shaper trying to make boards that suit everyone you know that's something i'm i'm learning to try and and build and create and sustain, um, you know, say a model that, that everyone could enjoy as well as myself. And, and then for me personally, yeah, I love staying creative though. And, um, I think there's, yeah, so many ideas and so many things to blend together, like being, you know, the, the, with the approach of the mini longboard type, you can have a fishtail, something that's really glidey and fast and, and just like sends you all over the place. 
And then you could have like a pointier nose or a wider nose and you get a little bit of everything, you know, you could, you go wider with the nose and you can, you can nose ride a little bit on the shoulder of softer waves. And if you pull it in, then you can, you know, wrap tighter turns and you can nose ride in a tighter pocket and it kind of wants a bullier wave. And I don't know. I think that, um, there's a little something for everything and yeah, sometimes going with more of a round tail performance tail for when it's bully as well. And then you, you can kind of like teeter totter with a little bit of both, you know? And, um, yeah, I don't know. I think there's endless ideas as well. Like say, try and, um, different rails, different thicknesses too. The thicknesses have been something I've been really enjoying tweaking is, you know, when you do go into this kind of long board, mid length range, a lot of people will want to keep them really thick. So you get the paddle power, which is really nice. You know, if you're at a wave that you need paddle power, but sometimes if it's something that you don't need to worry about that too much, you know, and you, you make it real thin and blady, you might cut it down to like a performance shortboard volume. And all of a sudden you have a board that responds really quickly, but you still have kind of the planing surface of a mid length. And so you can trim, you can nose ride. And then when you get back on the tail, it's like kicks into another gear. And that's been super fun. I mean, I've made a few that are under two inches thick that are around seven feet. And those have always surprised me the most with like, wow, like once it gets, gets up and gets going, it feels like a whole nother dimension. And just, I think with there being less foam under your feet, it's like, there's less, you have to tell the board what to do and more of just going where you want. And I think that's kind of the best type of surfboard you can have is something you don't have to think a ton about, but it just kind of goes and does it. And yeah, I get, but the only con about those ones is they're, they can be really hard to paddle and they can break easily. So I don't know for me, I'd love to kind of keep pushing down that little rabbit hole. (laughs) That's super rad. What surfers, influence you probably my top influence surfer is i'd say tommy witt you know just because he's one of my closest friends and we spend a lot of time together and we talk a lot about surfboard ideas you know designs and just kind of ways to approach a wave and he's always thinking outside the box and I feel like he pushes me a ton and at the same time keeps it really fun and just lighthearted and kind of keeps surfing, you know, what it's meant to be. And, um, yeah, I really appreciate having him my life. And then, um, a couple other guys who I look up to, I'd say Ryan Birch, definitely a top, you know, favorite surfer and always has been. And, um, I've had the pleasure of getting to know him surfing some of his boards and yeah, just getting to surf with him a few times over the years and super nice guy and his surfing is amazing. And, um, yeah, some other guys, Bryce Young, Derek Disney, a couple of legends as well. They're on like that same level everyone all those guys push each other and i feel like they're kind of leading the pack for a lot of us like younger guys my close friend jimmy jimmy surfs if you've seen him on instagram surf with him a lot his name is jimmy thompson and um yeah ripper and he moved over here from south carolina probably like four or five years ago and was just kind of like a shortboard grom little kid and we started surfing together, longboarding Sano, got him some mid links and yeah, he's, he's really good. And when he's in town, we always surf together. He, he does a lot of surfing in Hawaii on some 
sicker, like asymmetrical guns that um, our friend Ashton Pickle makes him, which is the A and H vessels, surfboards. And um, yeah, those guys, they just, I feel like they're pushing a cool thing as well. Kind of those longer mid lengths with a little bit more gun vibes to them out at sunset or pipe or something. And so, yeah, those are probably some of my, some of my buddies that I look up to. <laughs> That's incredible. Like all the guys you're mentioning and all the kind of boards that you're mentioning, they're really headed, taking surfing into a new direction because you guys are finding all these different ways to, to utilize the wave. And it's almost kind of funny. What do you think when you hear people call that retro? Uh, yeah, I I like that. I like retro. I feel like um that's kind of where I feel like surfing came from was that little bit of that longboard style and there was the evolution movement and Wayne Lynch, you know, his surfing when he was a kid before it went into the shortboard revolution. There was a, a small era there where he was riding some like eight foot boards and cross stepping ripping and um that is something that's inspired me a lot as well over the years and i like that i like the retro vibe i think there's a lot more to be experienced as well um so maybe a little bit of both retro and futuristic <laughs> yeah when i think of retro i think of like quite frankly the opposite of what you guys are doing like kind of more like there's a certain school of longboarder who they're they're only going to ride a certain type of longboard they're actually even going to only wear like a certain type of clothing drive a certain type of automobile like true like retro type purists whereas do you feel like that's limiting or or do you think that that's like legitimate like purism yeah, I think uh I think that whatever gets people stoked, you know, whatever gets people stoked on surfing is is rad, you know. I think that we all have a surfing journey and I feel like I've experienced lots of different phases <laughs> in my surfing journey. I've had my shortboard phase. I've had my purest longboard phase and I feel like now I'm kind of at a phase where you know, just kind of roll up to the beach and I like to have my log. I like to have my little fish. I'll have my shortboard sometimes. I'll have my mid lengths that are a little more performancey and my mid lengths that are a little more retro loggy. And I don't know. I just kind of, like to have the options of everything feel a little bit of everything and i th would think that you know if you were locked into one phase for too long you start to get burned out and at least that was my experience if someone is you know loving their retro login lifestyle their whole life that's awesome you know and more power to them you know <laughs> have fun and just enjoy it. And, um, I think that, yeah, there's so many different experiences though in surfing that if you do kind of have, keep that open mind, you know, um, there's just, there's so many feelings to experience and, um, fun things to, yeah, just be a part of. So I would think the best, the best journey in my opinion would be to have an open mind and ride everything and you know learn how to surf some bigger waves learn how to surf funky weird waves learn how to surf mushy waves whatever is around you and have equipment that works good in those waves and then you can go on a surf trip anywhere in the world and you know not be bummed because the waves are small or not be bummed because the waves are too big and or if it's too you know, backwashy or something. <laughs> so, yeah. That's incredible. I love that. Um, so do you still surf with your cousins and do they ever ride like, um, 
like traditional longboards? I do, yeah. Surf with my cousins every now and then, but it, no, it's really hard to get them to want to ride something other than their performance shortboards. I've I've gotten them to a couple times over the years, but uh, you I can kind of tell they're like it's it's cool and it's fun, but it feels like they kind of think of it as like yeah, it's cool. It's like a, just riding a soft top or something down. <laughs> at the beach wherever with your friends and um which is cool yeah they're they're locked into a whole nother world they're just they've got the competitive mindset and i'm like that's rad you guys are killing it and yeah have fun (laughs) i can have a hard time i mean i'll if i paddle out with them and out at lowers you know it's it's cool but I'm just not built, I'd say the same way as them where they're just, they kind of feed off the energy. They want to like push each other. They see, you know, people out there and they don't mind kind of like waiting for waves, which I mean, I don't mind waiting for waves, but if I had a choice to surf kind of a weirder, wonkier wave down the beach with no one around or a perfect wave with a hundred guys out, I'd rather go surf by myself and just kind of be in my own little world and just get a lot of waves, you know? So that's kind of where I'm at and, um, kind of separates us, you know, a little bit. (laughs) Explain how your cousin's number one in the world right now with the yellow Jersey. And do you watch the contests and, and what set of some emotions do you go through to see that? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's insane. Number one in the world is crazy. And super stoked for him. He's definitely put in a lot of time and effort. And, um, yeah, I love watching him surf and, you know, push each other with Crosby as well. And, um, yeah, it feels surreal for sure. (laughs) Being like, this is a kid I grew up with. And, um, yeah, I love it. I love seeing how good he is and, just getting to, um, yeah, experience that. And actually a really cool experience was when he came and was in the lowers contest for the championships and yeah, the whole town came out and we all had our shirts on our hats on, you know, the go Griffin, um, t-shirts and the whole beach had them on and the whole town showed up at trestles. It was like, the most people I've ever seen down at that beach. There's like thousands and thousands of people all with his hat on and everyone was cheering him on and super fun to, yeah, witness, you know, how much hype there is around him. And he always kind of lives up to it and surfs so well, always has a positive attitude, super nice kid. Um, Yeah. Never anything weird from Griffin. He's always been really cool headed and, just humble and yeah, he's a really gentle, gentle soul too. You know, like he goes out and rips, but he's also like uh thoughtful and, and just a nice kid. So I love that guy. <laughs> That's so cool. You know, I've got all these amazing clips of you from Birdman. I want to kind of talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of, of that surfing. Like you're taking off on these waves, like before it even breaks, and you're like already carving back and forth and like reading these waves. I've never seen surfing like that before anywhere. It's it's almost kind of like a, a whole new genre, the way that you're riding these boards that obviously they don't have that much drag. It seems like you're almost kind of like one step ahead of, of the wave rather than taking off and having to kind of rush to, to the lip. You've come in really far in advance and you're climbing and dropping in a manner which enables you to kind of measure the wave in a way that your surfing is giving the wave exactly what it calls for but in a very preemptive way yeah thanks man appreciate that yeah you're finding the fun little lines in there and it's a different approach than i'd say the traditional longboards and it's definitely a lot different than the shortboard approach where you can make a last minute adjustment you know, on a proper high performance shortboard, you can do a big snap and kind of just 
always be ready to go somewhere new on the wave. But I feel like with the long boards and the, the mid lengths, you've really got to lock in your lines a bit far in advance. I mean, I feel like when I'm on a, these boards, there's a lot of like one of my biggest goals is always trying to nose ride. And even if it's a smaller board, I always try to make them so that you can get like in the pocket and get that, you know, locked in trim and a little bit of lift, even on the smaller, like six foot range or seven foot range boards. Probably a big goal is fade it, you know, fade the takeoff if you can. Put yourself behind it a little bit, trim it, kind of glide it, try to get up there on the nose and then get out in front of it, do some wraps or kind of high line it. And I think with the fish boards, that's something we've been having fun with. You know, the waves that we have here in San Clemente and around San Diego, there's a lot of really soft reefs. And there's a lot of weird soft waves that nobody wants because it's it'll be kind of in between a longboard and a shortboard. It'll be perfect mid-lengthing waves. Not everyone really rides a lot of the mid-length, so the, a lot of times those waves will be empty. And that's kind of one of the reasons I got really into it because we have a stretch of beach yeah, down here where there's not a lot of people. And it's just kind of a weird wave that no one wants. And so but the fishtails are really, you know, super fast super loose, just pick up a ton of speed and we'll kind of drive through those flat sections. And, you know, the waves, sometimes with these weird wonky waves, it's like they'll kind of pitch for a second and then they'll mush out and then they'll kind of pitch on another part of the reef and mush out. And those are always, I felt like the most frustrating waves for a shortboard and a longboard. But on a mid-length, it's like you can kind of have the best of both worlds where if you're able to get between the trim and kind of like a like a drivey part of the tail where you're able to project still and kind of handle the bumps. Like that's where I feel like those waves start to become really fun and something that the wave makes you do. Otherwise you're going to get kind of bucked off. <laughs> and I know that you shoot a lot of drone footage and have a lot of footage of yourself. Explain to me how you benefit from that as far as like learning. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You can, get that drone footage. It's, I think it's some of the prettiest, you know, footage and you get to see so many parts of the wave. So helpful to look back and realize, you know, Oh, I should have stalled a little longer here or should have hit it a little early. I don't know. Yeah. It's so nice because it always feels so different when you're on the wave than when you look at it and you realize like, Oh yeah, I didn't that as hard as I thought. Or you're like, well, that was super fun and just cruisy. And it's one of the best tools for sure. I do a lot of surf coaching here. I coach at a local high school and a lot of the times I'll bring my camera down to the beach and have the kids surf, call them in, show them their wave. And it's probably one of the best tools to have for sure for improvement. Yeah. Man, it seems like getting a board from you would be just a huge opportunity for any surfer. How can people order a board from you or can they, are they available to anyone? Yeah. I've been doing some customs here and there, but they're just trying to make the boards that I know will work good for people and just have stocks. You know, if you go to, my website, kukapino.com. So tell me what's behind the name Kukapinto. Kukapino is, yeah, just kind of a little fun spoof on my last name, Colapinto. Um, one time when I was surfing with Griffin and Crosby, we were surfing out at Lowers as kids. Some people wrote on our car and wax Kuka Pintos. <laughs> and it was like back when Lowers was kind of like regulated, you know, by the kind of grumpy old guys. Yeah, I remember I was kind of like, oh no, like we shouldn't be surfing here. Like this is bad. And and then my dad and my uncle, they just laughed it off and we kept we just kept going back, having fun, surfing and and then when I was making my Instagram one day, I was like, well, Griffin and Crosby are kind of the pros and I'm kind of the kookier side of the Cola Pinto. So I just ran with it. <laughs> well, <that's laughs> it. well yeah. right on. Well, shoot, this has been an amazing conversation. Super inspiring. Um, any little last gems you want to leave us with? Dude, just shout out to, yeah, TR, the legend himself. 
yeah, thanks for having me. And um, yeah, I'd say to anyone listening in, just yeah, keep following what TR is doing. And um, yeah, the the fun adventure that yeah, I feel like you're paving the way in in such a cool way and keeping people stoked and between your surf videos and the old skate videos that you've put out just keeping it really core and legendary and but also having fun something that everyone can have a you know feel like they're a part of and super honored to be here and you know everything you've done with tommy witt has been super inspiring to me as well and i'm looking forward to what you guys are doing a ton and i want to uh, yeah get on a trip with you guys someday soon for sure. I think, you know, you've been doing it for so long and I'd love to be able to go on a surf trip with you, experience, you know, some, some of the gems you've found around the world and, um, get to learn, yeah, all your tips and tricks to making rad surf videos and just staying stoked. So (laughs) thank you for, yeah, all the inspiration. Right on. Yeah. I can't wait you yeah let's stay in touch and i'll talk to tommy here soon and um yeah let's see what we can do work some magic yeah Corey, thanks again and have a great evening appreciate it yeah thanks bro okay more soon yes see ya visualizing paddling out and making it real dedication on a level only you can feel motivation it gets stronger every year realization Action Cures Fear. The Surfcast, yeah. Team Anti Over It. See you, Royale. Major Inspiration. Is this enough? Is this enough? Is this enough?